They only wanted to do the Yamaha to prepare. So I said, but, but they said they promised it, so they said, we have to, we've promised you that, so we'd have to rent you a piano, you know, from the, So I actually, but I have a very good relationship with Steinway in New York. And Stein <laughs> makes for good press. Yeah, right. Okay, so Preston. If you right. Could, if you can sound. Right. But you'll, you'll. This weather stripping is antique weather stripping. Weather stripping these days is not felt, so it's hard to come by. A lot of things in the John Cage scores are now obsolete and you have to improvise a little bit. If you haven't been around as long as I have. Some of the metal preparations he wants certain kinds of bolts. I don't think they even exist anymore. So one has to be a little bit creative. Just as the radio stations he asked for, they don't exist either. Those points on the dial. loose nuts work better. This last one I'm going to put in a screw a bolt with a loose nut. Some, some nuts sound better than others. Let's try this one. You know, the interesting thing about the table of preparations in the John Cage works. I should pull out another one more complex one to show you what I mean, okay? Oh, um, oh, what was the other kind of bolts? There's a black bolt, a headless bolt. You know, a lot of these things are...
very specific to the piece. All right, and um, not only does he specify the material and the particular note that it's prepared, he even specifies between the first and second, or the second and third of each note. Let's have three strings to a note. And he specifies also the, in inches the distance from the dampers. Now, see, this is, shows how meticulous he was, or obsessive at that point. Three and five sixteenths. Now, three and five sixteenths and three and a quarter are practically the same thing. And when you consider how fat a bowl, it, it really doesn't matter, right? Or four and twenty-three upon thirty-two. I don't, you know, I don't think he, he really meant it to me. How would you measure four inches and twenty-three upon thirty-two? I mean, you begin to wonder what is um, the thinking behind this. I think, I've never asked him about this, and this is something I, I wish I had, why he was specifying to such minute degree. Is it a form of control? But the ultimate irony of it was it was all in vain, because he worked with a smaller piano than a concert grand piano. He worked with a seven-foot piano, you know, a B, which is that, that size, okay? No, I think he worked with an A. I'm pretty sure, yeah, it was an A, which is this size. If this is an A, that's a B, okay? When you perform, you invariably perform a nine-foot concert grand. And when you perform a nine-foot concert grand, the strings are that much longer. So propor different. proportionally, whatever he said here has no meaning. If you were to literally place them where he's so painstakingly indicated, it sounds dreadful. Do you, you have, the that's you why, that's why I use my ear, yeah. and that's what John liked about the way I prepared pianos. So I wish they'd, they'd make a note of this, you know, that this is, is really something that only applies to that particular size piano. Yeah. So that's what, something I wanted to point out. That's good, you. that's good, that's very interesting. That wasn't recorded, was it? Uh, I think he was... Oh, you got it, right? <laughs> you recorded that, even though my voice was turning towards him? Mm -hmm. Do with a disturbed mind. He and Cunningham were fascinated by the disturbed mind in the early to mid 40s. Mm -hmm. And I like it that John and I never discussed what the disturbed mind meant to him. Because Four Walls is a study of the disturbed mind. And everybody brings to it their own personal experience. You see? And whatever it was for John, it doesn't matter. It's totally irrelevant. Because it opens up for you the own inner walls. The, the, it opens up for you the own four walls of your mind and the, it's your own inner labyrinth within those four walls and you explore what for you is a disturbed mind. I know very well for me what it is and I'll say it because I have no secrets about it. It's, it's obsessive compulsive. Um, uh, that's what to me the disturbed mind means, is obsessive compulsiveness. And for John, maybe even something else. But the way that the, the Hamlet repetitions over and over and over again, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some element of that that he got rid of through Zen. <laughs> because after writing Four Walls, he was going to give up composing altogether and devote himself and undergo psychoanalysis. And that was the last piece that had. And then he discovered Zen. Down. Yeah. And then he discovered Zen and, no, 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 Ophelia, yeah. all those things came later. Oh, they came he worked okay. himself out of it. That was 46, Ophelia. But, you know, and Ophelia is nothing but a portrait of, of, of a mind gone awry. Really, it frightened me so. And I, in fact, I even asked John, why is it so violent? I mean, Shakespeare's Ophelia wasn't that violent. Why is your Ophelia so violent? And John said, well, Madness in the disturbed mind is, is very violent, even if it's not manifested externally, it invariably ravages the sufferer internally. So it's always violent. And that answered the question for me. Yeah, I can, I can, I can see that. All right, so talking about a happier piece, this is fucking now. Okay. By the way, Ophelia is on my, um, one of my cage CDs, the daughter CD is a piece for prepared piano that John ever wrote. Now this is really reminiscent, this piece is really reminiscent of the Balinese gamelan. And that's why my friend wanted to dance to it. too open for me. 
So I'm going to take a bit of artistic license and put another piece of weather stripping in on top of what I've done because I think that will mute it more, otherwise it still sounds too much like an open piano. A lot of this is trial and error, you know. One more on each of these bottom ones, and I think that will do the trick. Let's see. It's like following a recipe, which note to prepare, what to prepare it with. But even if two cooks make the same dish, it comes out different. When two pianists prepare a piano, it will also come out different. Over and over again. 